Hi everyone, Amy here. I thought I'd come to you again with another frequently asked questions for gardening. This is for early May. I have six questions today, so we'll just get started. Uh, Leslie Y asked, when is a good time to plant bush bushes like uh, hydrangeas and azaleas? I see people buying them in spring. Spring is absolutely a great time. Unfortunately, we had a frost the other night, so if you did plant them early, it might have taken care of the flowers for you. But spring is a great time. Actually, spring through fall is a great time. As long as they are irrigated and well taken care of, any time during the growing season is just fine. Question two. When do you use topsoil, potting soil, sweet peat, and peat moss? Great question. Topsoil, basically just for when you need to fill in a bed. Maybe you took out a really, really big tree and you want to plant some flowers or some shrubs. You actually just need more soil in the bed. That is what topsoil is for. Topsoil is not for pots. The uh, soil can get too compact in containers. So that's what potting soil is for. It's a great choice for your containers, window boxes, deck boxes, things like that. Sweet peat is an absolutely great product. It is a compost type product. It is great to be used for annuals, especially for vegetables, perennials, trees, shrubs. Uh, peat moss, which we refer to as pre-moistened peat moss, is a necessity here in Northern Ohio. We have very heavy clay soil. The peat moss helps break up the clay and helps with drainage. Peat moss is necessary for planting things like rhododendrons, azaleas, and dogwoods. And on the topic of soil again, do I have to replace my potting soil every year? No, I sure don't. Uh, one thing I do do is I have really big pots. The bottom half I actually fill with some crushed pop cans, old packing peanuts, and I usually only replace the top third or so of the potting soil every year. Then I mix in some fertilizer into that too to help it get going. Okay, number four. You mentioned in your video on planting rhododendrons and azaleas that you should not water with water from a water softener. Why is that? There's just one reason, salt. There'll be too much salt in the uh, soil. And the plant won't do very well. So for our fifth question, I asked our annual house manager, Melanie, what is that top question you are getting asked by customers in the greenhouse? She said, what is the difference between an impatient a New Guinea patient and a sun patient. Well, you're all familiar probably with the regular impatient, uh, the little tiny little cute flowers in a multitude of colors for part shade or shade, uh, available usually in flats and pots, hanging baskets, great plant. Uh, lately it's gotten a bad rap over the last few years for the susceptibility to downy mildew. The last couple years we have not seen that as a problem in the greenhouses, so I think it's safe to go ahead and plant those again. So the New Guinea patient is one of my favorite annuals. It has larger leaves, glossier, darker leaves, and larger flowers than the regular impatient. My favorite uh, series of New Guinea patients is called Rococo. It has like a ruffled edge around the flowers. These also are shade loving. They can take up to half a day sun. They are particular about water. They like to be wet almost all the time. If you let it dry out too much, the plant will wilt completely. Uh, if you go ahead and give it water by the next day, it will perk up, but do not let this particular plant dry out. Now the sun patient, even though sun is in the title, can tolerate sun to shade. We actually plant these out by, our, by the road, by our digital sign. They do great out there, full sun. They do get irrigated by drips. Uh, but this has thicker, thicker foliage. It's more disease resistant than some of the other impatients. It's a great choice for full sun or shade. Okay, our last question for today. Why is it better to buy a bald and burlap plant over a potted plant? Well, this isn't necessarily true. One of the reasons why you might wanna choose a bald and burlap plant is for those that are not thorough waterers. A lot of times a potted plant has, takes a little bit longer to get established, but if you care for your plants well, keep them irrigated as you should, a bald and burlap or potted plant should not matter. I personally do like potted plants better. Bald and burlap plants are just too heavy and bulky for me to handle. I have a very strong husband who could handle these, but a lot of times I just want to get the plant, get it home, get it planted. Uh, the hold is usually smaller. Uh, it's just my preference. 
Well, thank you again for watching. I appreciate it. If you have a question for our next video, feel free to ask us in the comments below, or you can email to info at datenursery.com, or you can send it to Facebook Messenger, our page on Facebook as well. I did also want to mention I'm using a brand new vlogging camera today. I have a Canon G7X Mark II. I'm very happy with the quality. However, the sound, maybe not so much. So we'll see how that goes. I am in a very large barn. I'm in the owl barn right now. So there's a lot of echo. So let me know what you think. Okay, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.